friends. I'm sitting outside here at the last homely house in the area that I call the pavilion and I want to tell you a little bit about that today. But first of all I've just been round the garden and I've picked everything that looks pretty and is in flower. Some bits of blossom and some flowers and even some weeds. I like to do that and put them in this little container thing that I made when I was at pottery a few years ago. It's just lots of weird little tubes in a uh, in a dish and I love filling this up with flowers and it keeps me company on the table. So this pavilion then let me tell you a little bit about it. I built it a number of years ago from the base of an old greenhouse and uh, it sort of encloses this area here. It hasn't got any walls or a roof but it's, uh, it's the place where the table is, where my seat is. I'll show you my sofa seat and I create sort of plant walls. The most permanent one is this cordoned apple behind me. A number of years ago these apple trees were planted and trained along wires so that they will form a wall. At the moment they're a wall of blossom, then there'll be a wall of leaves and then in the autumn there'll be a wall of apples. And I've got some plans to do another couple of plant walls. I think there'll be a sweet pea wall if that all works and there'll be a sunflower wall. So I'll, I'll show you those if they work and that will mean that the pavilion will be slightly enclosed here. It's the area where I like to uh, have a cup of tea with friends. It's uh, somewhere I like to come and sit and do some stitching or a bit of knitting. Um, sometimes I even run the extension cable out here and bring a little sewing machine out here. I've got a little camping stove and so I can cook if I want to and when the weather is just right uh, I barely go inside it's just such a lovely place to be. My granddaughter Agnes really likes it here too and she was visiting me yesterday and I think it was a video that I made last year maybe we'll put that on the end card where I made Agnes a blackboard for her birthday and we have the blackboard out here now and she was here yesterday and I was drawing her a little bee and some flowers. Then Agnes and I got into a fairy tea party and I found these little jar lids that we made uh, into um, a little plate of fairy food for each of the fairies. And I love leaving things like this out because it just reminds me of what a lovely time I had with Agnes yesterday. There are four plates, one for Agnes, three for the fairies. <laughs> So what else do I do in the pavilion? I have my sofa, my bath chair. A number of years ago I asked a friend of mine to cut a cast, an old cast iron bath down for me and make it into this sofa which is where um, I bring cushions out and blankets and I can sit out here and knit or chat or listen to audiobooks. It was a beautiful day on Sunday for instance and I, I sat out here and and finished the border on my mitered square blanket. That's done now and it's over the back of the sofa. I bring everything in at the end of the day uh, but in the daytime when it's a beautiful day like today then I put those out there. I think it looks absolutely lovely. I'm very pleased with the way the border turned out. I just uh, cast on with long circular needles and just knit 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 in all different colours and I think it looks really good. It's kind of framed it and finished it off. But I wanted to talk particularly now about uh, this time of year, this time of year, May, uh, the middle of May and all the um, blossoms in the trees and the bushes and the flowers are all just starting to peep through. And there's a rowan tree in the hedge here and that's got absolutely beautiful white blossoms. The hawthorn are just in tight buds now and they'll be out very very soon. The biggest area of uh, flowers that's about to burst into bloom is the clematis that's underneath my window and very soon maybe in a week's time that will be absolutely filled with flowers and the scent is amazing. That clematis just comes back and back and back each year it's absolutely wonderful. So I love this time of year for watching all these um, beautiful um, trees, it's these little trees and shrubs I particularly like. I mean the apple blossoms just going over now um, that's been spectacular but all the row and all these other things are just coming into flower now so beautifully. 
It's a marvellous time of year. The leaves are kind of like a really lime green because they're brand new. So right beside me here I've got an oak tree and a uh, birch tree and the leaves are just the best green possible. They are absolutely beautiful. So if you've been watching a while at the last homey house you'll know this place is all about cats. You'll usually see a cat in these videos somewhere. But last September my lovely old cat Norma died. She was an amazing cat. I would start a YouTube video, Hello YouTube Friends, I think she thought that was what her name was, and she would jump up wherever I was and dominate the, the frame for a few minutes. And she died when she was 20 years old. What a remarkable cat. And I buried her and always had the idea that I wanted to plant something really special there. But quite by chance my daughter Martha had the same idea and we both bought the same lily of the valley plants to plant around that area where Norma is buried. And so they've just gone in this last week and uh, I've kept them in the polytunnel for a little while just to get them established. And so with a bit of luck there's going to be an amazing um, lily of the valley um, wash of flowers all around that area there. I'm really pleased uh, that we waited and planted those plants for Norma. What an amazing cat she was. I now just have two cats, Sadie and Rita, and you'll sometimes see them uh, around and about in, the, in these little films that I make for you. So we'll keep an eye on Norma's Lily of the Valley and see how they are. It's absolutely lovely sitting out, out here listening to the birds. I mean, I'm sometimes listening to the cars as well <laughs> and the farm vehicles coming in and out. But actually, there's quite a lot of birds too and bees because where I'm sitting just over there is my beehive and the bees are coming and going all the time I'm really enjoying uh, this time of year it's fantastic Can you hear that one? Oh, speaking of bees there is one I wonder who that was I started this channel about five years ago, actually sitting out here in the pavilion doing some spinning. And it's been amazing seeing the growth of the channel as more and more people have found it. And to start with it was really quite small growth and then we'd have a little blip where a load more people would join. And then I remember that time Arne and Carlos said hello to me in one of their videos and I got a lot of new people come and join me after that. Hello to all you Arne and Carlos fans. But I've noticed there's been another little growth and I don't know why, I don't know where you've all come from, but I'm really happy to see you here. So welcome to The Last Homely House, all you new subscribers. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe and hit the notifications bell then you'll never miss a single time when I post a video. I usually post on a Sunday evening at about 7 o'clock my time and uh, once a week and then over on Patreon there's a lot more content as well that's all ad free and uh, going back for about three years, four years. Uh, and so th there's always that. If you really like watching Last Homey House videos, there's always loads over there. I'm going to take you over and show you my sofa now and also show you the knitting that I'm doing and show you the mitered square blanket. It's just here. I hope you could hear that bird. That bird's the curlew, the national bird of Northumberland, which is where I am. It's the most beautiful bird. This is my bath seat. It's very handy because you can put a cup of tea on here. I'll show you my knitting in a sec. But here is the border then on the mitered square blanket. I just cast on and went round and round and round in one colour on each side. I really like this blanket. I think I'm probably going to make quite a few more because it was fun to knit and I have a lot of wool obviously. I'll leave the link to the pattern that I used in the description below. It was a website I found uh, called The Knitting Squirrel 
and um, it's quite straightforward but you'll find it anywhere if you search on Pinterest or anywhere YouTube you'll find mitre square blankets I think it looks well there I'm knitting this at the moment though I just cast this on on Sunday I was sitting outside in this very bath seat uh, with a, uh, a cup of tea and an audio book and I was sitting knitting this and this is a jumper I've made before it's a top-down jumper which are my favorite sort to knit because you um, don't have any side seams you do it on a circular needle and there's no side seams and also when you get to the sleeves you just put the sleeve stitches on a spare bit of yarn and knit the body down as long as you want it so I cast this on in my absolute favorite color the other day what a surprise and I'll leave again I'll leave the pattern it's called Nuke N-U-U-K and I made the last one I made for my daughter who's very skinny I'm making this one for me so it's quite a bit bigger <laughs> um, and I also don't like things to be tight so I've been knitting on that one out here in the uh, in the pavilion sitting in my beautiful bath seat here <laughs> sit here and knit for quite a long time. I might go and make a cup of tea and come back out here while the sun's still beautiful. And so I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care now. Bye bye.